How many times have you needed to graph a trigonometric function and completely forgot exactly what they looked like? You forgot their characteristics, shape, and size. Well, in this video, I am here to save you. Well, I'm really not gonna save you, but there is one thing I wanna show you that's gonna make graphing trigonometric functions from now on easy and fast. Really, all you need to know is this. Yes, I'm talking about the unit circle, but don't worry, you can see there's only four points on this unit circle. When we need to graph a trigonometric function, we don't need to know each and every point. Right now, we're looking into graphing it rather quickly and getting the general shape and size so we can understand what the graph looks like as well as its characteristics. So the only four points that we need to know is when the unit circle crosses our x and our y axis, which is going to have our points 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. Now, you might be asking yourself, how is the unit circle going to help us graph our trigonometric function? Well, remember, our unit circle is on an x, y axis, but there's another variable that we need to consider, which is going to be theta, which we use to understand our values of our trigonometric function. For instance, when I say, what is the sine of theta? What I'm looking for is the y coordinate on the unit circle. When I say cosine of theta, I'm looking for the x coordinate on the unit circle. Tangent of theta is y over x on the unit circle. Cotangent is the reciprocal of that, which is x over y. Cos secant is the reciprocal of sine, which is going to be one over y. And then we have our secant of theta, which is the reciprocal of cosine, which is going to be one over x. These I'm talking about values that are on the unit circle. And you can see the four points that I selected are four points on the unit circle. So now I can interchangeably use the sine of theta with the y coordinate in the same respect for cosine of theta with the x coordinate and tangent of theta as the ratio of y over x. Just be careful of using these ratios with y and x outside of the unit circle. So when we want to know how how do we graph y equals sine of theta? It's important to understand that theta is going to represent our input value. So that was previously used as x, but we're just going to use theta now as the input. And y is just representing our output value. It's not the same y as on the unit circle. It's just going to be y representing the output value. So when I plug in an angle, I want to look for what is my output. So you can see in this first example, when I have the angle zero, since sine represents the y coordinate on the unit circle, you can see the y value is going to equal zero. Then I'll go ahead and put a dot at zero. At the next angle, which is going to be at pi halves, the y coordinate is going to equal one. So therefore I'll put a dot here at pi halves and one. At the next angle, I'm at pi, which is halfway around a circle. You can see the y coordinate is going to be at zero. So therefore we'll put a dot at pi zero. And then with three quarters of the way around the circle, which is going to be at three pi over two, the y coordinate is negative one. And then all the way around the circle is going to equal two pi. Now by connecting all of these dots, you can see we have the shape of the sine graph. Now I could obviously continue you going around the unit circle, but I think you would recognize that the graph is just going to keep on repeating itself. I can also go in the negative direction and the pattern of this graph would continue. So all we're looking at right now is just what we call the initial period. But you can see just using these four points, we're able to very quickly be able to graph what sine looks like. All right, so now let's go and take a look at the cosine graph. And again, I'm going to use the equation y equals cosine of theta. But remember, theta represents my input and y represents my output. So I'm going to look at, at an angle, which is going to be input. And then the output in this example is going to be the x coordinate of my point on the unit circle because that was the definition of cosine for a point on the unit circle. So when I look at the angle of zero, you can see I have an x coordinate of one. So I'll put a dot here at one. When I look at the angle of pi halves, I have an x coordinate of zero. When I look at the angle of pi halfway around a circle, I have an x coordinate of negative one. When I go to three pi over two, angle of three pi over two, I have a x coordinate of zero. And then all the way around, which would be two pi, you can see that I have an x coordinate again of one. So now all I'm simply going to do is connect all of my dots and you can see that I have a graph that looks very, very similar to sine, but just a little bit shifted. And again, I can continue going around the circle as needed and the pattern of cosine would continue. Now I'm graphing the tangent function rather than just using only positive values. I'm actually going to go in the positive and the negative direction. And that's just because that is the easiest way for us to understand and view the initial period. But again, theta is going to represent my input value and y is going to represent my output output value. Now again with tangent, what we're looking for is a ratio of my points on the unit circle y over x. The first angle I have is zero. Well, if you look at the x and the y coordinates, it's y over x. So zero over one is zero. So I'll just put a dot at zero. I'll go to pi halves and you can see that's going to be one over zero, which is undefined. That's why I'll go ahead and graph a nice little asymptote. Now, if we were to continue in this positive direction, you would see I'd be going back to pi. The graph already starting to repeat itself. But to get a better idea of what this graph looks like, I'm actually going to go in the negative direction to negative pi over two, where again, you'll see a negative one over zero, which is undefined, which is a 
again going to create an asymptote. Now it's really important for us to understand that asymptotes is where the graph approaches. Now we can use other points like pi over four, pi over three, pi over six to really finalize how this graph is going to look. But you can see the graph is going to approach each and every asymptote and kind of take the form of the S curve. Now when I want to graph cotangent, I'm going to do the exact same thing. However, the initial period is actually only positive in this case. And again, remember cotangent of theta is the X over Y for points on the unit circle. By looking at my first angle zero, you can see one over zero is undefined. So therefore I'll have a nice asymptote going over there. When I go to my next angle, pi halves, I have zero over one, which is going to equal zero, which is going to be a nice dot at pi halves. It's going to be zero over one, which is going to be a point there. And then as I go halfway around the circle, which would be the angle pi, you can see I have my X over Y is negative one over zero, which again is undefined, providing me with another asymptote. And again, by using some other points, you can understand the shape and pattern of the graph is going to be kind of the reverse direction of the tangent graph. Now getting into the final two graphs that I want you to be able to do rather quickly is going to be cosecant and secant. So the important thing here is we could use the ratios like we did for the previous four examples, but I think when dealing with cosecant and secant, it's just important to understand that they are the reciprocal of your sine and cosine. So rather than actually plotting points based on the reciprocal functions, what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to go ahead and graph the reciprocal function. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So what I'm going to quickly do is from my memory, because I now know how to graph sine rather quickly, I'm just going to go and plot the points and go ahead and connect them. That is what we have the sine graph. Now, again, remember when we're dealing with reciprocal, what we're doing is we're putting these values over one. So therefore at the value zero, I'm now going to put a asymptote there because the graph is undefined. That also is the case you can see at every single in X intercept. So also that's going to occur at pi as well as at two pi. The points where the sine of X is equal to one, one over one is still one. So cosecant and sine are going to share those two points. So you can see that's why these graphs are now just going to go in the opposite direction, but they're going to share the output value of one. Now in graphing Y equals secant of theta, I'm going to use the exact same process, but now I'm going to use the reciprocal graph cosine to help me graph secant. So again, we need to know the points that make up cosine and we'll just go ahead and quickly plot them and then connect them so we can see what the initial period of cosine looks like. And again, just like we did for cosecant and sine, wherever cosine is equal to zero, my secant is going to be undefined. So therefore I will place some asymptotes. When cosine is equal to one or negative one, the secant is just going to be a reciprocal of that, which will be equal to those same values. So therefore they're going to share them and we're just going to approach them in the opposite directions. So hopefully this video was helpful on at least initially graphing our trigonometric functions quick and easy. In the next video, what I want to do is show you how to graph when we have transformations, because that's usually when students get tricked up graphing trigonometric functions. So go ahead and check out my next video. Or if you just want more examples of me graphing trigonometric functions, check down the examples below. Cheers.